Lesson number six: AM synthesis and playback. In this tutorial, I am going to present you with amplitude modulation synthesis, or AM for short. We will use this technique to affect a sound file stored on our PC, which we will learn how to read into pure data. AM is based on a sound signal named carrier, which might be a sinusoidal wave or a more complex sound, as we will see, such as a recording of an instrument or a voice. The carrier is modulated in its volume or amplitude. What does it mean to modulate? This means that we are going to require a second sound signal called the modulator, usually a sinusoidal wave, that applies its shape to the movement of the volume. In other words, the volume, or the amplitude, of a signal carrier is varied in proportion to that of the modulator. It is as if there were someone moving the volume up and down several times per second. How many times? The number defined by the frequency of the modulator signal. In order to produce AM synthesis, it is necessary that the frequency of the modulator is bigger than 20 Hz. This is because, below that threshold, we would not be creating any synthesis. Instead, we would only be applying an audio effect to the carrier signal, known as tremolo. The difference is that AM, like other kinds of synthesis, is able to modify the physical characteristics of the carrier, while a tremolo only changes the amplitude. I won't delve that much into the theory behind this, due to time constraints and because this tutorial is meant to be practical. Let's make a brand new patch and create two oscillators, one for the carrier and one for the modulator. Let's add a multiplier for the signal and connect both oscillators to it, the carrier as left and the modulator as right operands. Now we have the carrier signal which is modulated by the modulator frequency. So if we would connect a DAC tilde, we would be done. <laughs> Actually, it is not true because there are a couple of things we need to take care of. The first thing you need to know is that a waveform, such as the one we are using in this patch, oscillates at a certain rate which corresponds to the frequency inside of a certain range that goes from minus one to plus one. Why am I telling you this? Because although what we implemented is modulating the amplitude, look at the multiplier. It is not AM yet. What we just did is actually called ring modulation, or RM, synthesis and the effect produced on the sound is slightly different. To create real amplitude modulation synthesis, we need to reduce the range of our modulator from minus one to plus one to zero to one. Doing this just requires some very basic math skills. We need first to add one to the modulator signal in order to bring our range into the positive domain. I use this object, plus tilde, because we are operating on a signal not on numbers. Okay, now the range of our modulator goes from zero to two, and there is no more negative signal. If we divide this by two with the object slash tilde, we bring the signal down into the range of zero to one. That is what we need. Let's connect this to the multiplier, and this is the algorithm that implements AM synthesis. There are still some interesting things I want to show you. Before, I said that AM particularly suits complex sounds, but we already know that OSC tilde produces the most basic sound, a sinusoidal wave. So let's get rid of the oscillator we used for the carrier. Another solution would be to use an oscillator that produces a more complex waveform, such as a phaser, which produces a sawtooth wave. 
Let's check the help file for a moment. If we set here a frequency of 5000 Hz, we can clearly observe that this waveform is different from the ones we have met up to now. Nevertheless, I have the feeling that this waveform is not complex enough. I just wanted to show you this object because you might want to use it in the future, but for the moment, we don't need it. What I want to do now, rather, is to show you how we can read a sound file stored on the PC into pure data. The sound file I provide you, containing a voice recording, definitely has a more complex waveform and thus will produce more appealing results. In order to read a sound file, we need to introduce a new object, read sf tilde. We also add an argument, 2. What does it mean? 2 is the number of channels the sound file has. It is stereo, so it has two channels, one left and one right. Let's connect to the outlet of the multiplier, connected to our oscillator, a second multiplier. This time with a fixed argument 0 0.5. We must also create a DAC to go out to our sound card. Now we connect the leftmost outlet of read SF to the upmost multiplier. We copy and paste this, and we connect this, as you can see. Did you understand what I did? We said that our sound file has two channels. This means that we need to run AM on both channels, left and right. Since the amplitude of each channel would sum up together, we might get distortion, and that's the reason why I put another multiplier at the end, to halve the volume of each channel. We are almost done now. We just need to figure out how to tell readSF which file to read. This can be done in a few steps. First, let's create two messages and connect both to readSF. In the first one, I type zero. We will need this to stop the playback. By the way, don't forget to check the help file of read sf. In the other message, we are going to type open string one, comma, one. What does it mean? Open a file located somewhere. That's the reason why I used the string symbol, because the path itself is a variable. After this has been done, a comma, start to play it, the number 1. Let's also create a print object and connect to this the latter message. I'll explain to you later why we are doing this. The last step is to get the path of the file I want to read. To do this, I need two objects, a bang, and open panel. What open panel does is it opens a window that allows us to choose a sound file stored on the hard disk. We need the bang to trigger open panel that will pass the path of the file I choose as a variable to the message open. Let's try it. Very nice, it works. We still have a very last issue to figure out. As you have noticed, the file plays only once, but most likely we would prefer to create a loop so that we don't have to select a file every time. Unfortunately, there is no message we can send to read SF to set the loop on, so we need to use a trick. The rightmost outlet of read SF 
sends out a bang when it ends the playback of the file. Let's connect a bang to it to check. Here we go. This means that I can create a message that tells read sf to open again the same file at the same path and play it. That's actually very easy to do. Let's take a message and we type inside it open space and now we need to copy and paste here inside the exact path of the file we want to read. Where can we find this? That's the reason why we used print. If you look in the log window, you will see there the path of the file we read some minutes ago. Let's copy and paste it inside the message. and add comma 1. Now we are really done. Let's try it again. Very good, it works as expected. In this tutorial, we not only implemented amplitude modulation synthesis, but we also built an easy and effective system to read and loop a sound file, which can be used each time you need it. The next tutorial is the last one of the first part, and we will see how to implement frequency modulation synthesis.